So hey guys, Romy here. Please like, comment, subscribe. This is... <laughs> so this is Underground Season 2, Episode 5, Whiteface. Now, again, Whiteface. So when we're seeing it, it starts off with... It looks almost like it's going to be some black face. You know, coonery and buffoonery, and I was not here for that. Please like, comment, subscribe, by the way, if I didn't already say so. Uh, I wasn't here for that. What ends up happening is... We have all of these rich, highfalutin white people coming to the room. It seems to be okay, right? Seems to be okay. Well, now this uh, black person comes out in white face, and they're looking at him like, huh? But then he starts joking around, and he's saying, you know, he's pretending to be the master. And the thing is that it goes south because he talks about how, oh, he's trying to go and have sex with this lamb. And they're looking at him like, uh, okay, well, huh, that's still the joke is still kind of funny in general. It switches from that to now there's more of them. And more of them are talking about how, you know, uh, we need to go and it's a free country and our inhibitions are loose here. And so it was like men with men, everyone doing whatever they want. Now, mind you, these are black people in whiteface. So, the white audience wasn't happy about that. The white audience got up in their highfalutin, oh my word, oh my, stars and cars. They got up and left, and we heard this one person laughing. This one person cackling, actually. And it was Kato. Kato was the person who set it all up. And, because we know Kato has a lot of money, so he set up this play. Now, uh... We see Georgia, Georgia, she's doing stuff downstairs. We see the abolitionist men talking, you know, part of the sewing circle. They are about action. They want to go and follow more so, because there's this abolitionist, John. And John, he's on this mantra of, you need to be physical, you need to fight. You need to go and take the battle to them. And, what was his name? John Brown, I believe? But yeah, and the thing is, Elizabeth is hearing this, because remember, she's still trying to decide for herself if she wants to more so be a pacifist and kind of help with her words, or does she want to go and take action? The thing is, Lucas wants to take action. Lucas is all about taking action. We hear all this ruckus, and apparently they're after Georgia. So they go and they take Georgia. Georgia tells Elizabeth, go into my, uh, what is it called, go into my desk? get out this piece of paper, bring it down to the station. It's in the black envelope. Only you. Now, of course, uh, Elizabeth is stopped. She was trying to go and make sure that Rose was fine. Rose is new to this, so she goes and she hides inside the wall. She hides inside the wall because Rose is not playing around. She did not come this far just to get caught up. And the thing is, their whole operation is going to be messed up. So now... Uh, that's why Georgia went and was like, okay, let's go and leave, because they were checking. They figured, uh-uh, we, we found out some information. This place is a hiding spot for slaves. Now, we see, we see our girl, Lady E is what I'm calling her. Actually, no. Ernestine kind of, she's kind of becoming Ernestine again. She's starting to become Ernestine again, so I'll give it to her. Ernestine is be, having the same treatment that Clara got when the men, well, when the people found out that she went and had a baby, uh, or got pregnant at least. Now, Ernestine, remember, she tried to kill herself, and they know that she was on that mess. And Ernestine just told them off. She was essentially like, screw off. Half of you guys do the same thing as well. So I don't understand why you're trying to go and make it seem like I'm the big and bad uh, person here. Clara goes and says like, you know what? She likes Ernestine. She wants to uh, be more like Ernestine. And Ernestine's like, no, no, no. Well, is it true that you were with your, um, you were sleeping with your master or so? She's like, yeah. So what happened to your kids? Uh, yeah. My daughter, no, slavery, my daughter ran away, son, in slavery. Here's the thing, Clara wants to go and, you know, have Ernestine mentor her. Because Clara wants to get close to the uh, slave owner. So that she can kind of become the Ernestine of that plantation. Oh my lord, Jesus. This is all too much. We see this party, and I'm trying to figure out, okay, so what's going on here? Everyone's in this room. They're having a good time, they're enjoying themselves, and the thing is, it's Kato. Kato, and apparently his friend was his name. 
he has this friend, he's white, and his friend's concerned about him because his friend's trying to figure out what are you trying to prove? Like, why are you doing this? You're not going to be making any money scaring off the, um, or pissing off the white people. And Kale says, I don't care. This is essentially his version of retribution. He said, look, I'm going to do whatever I want because I have all this money. It's time to have them be shaken up, shook. His friend doesn't want him to go and die because he knows he's drawing too much attention. It's not a good look. Now, Elizabeth goes down to the courthouse. She gets Georgia. They're coming back. And Georgia tells Elizabeth, don't tell them anything. What? Yeah, don't tell them anything. The issue is that Georgia is the um, slave that got her free papers. So Georgia has been praying around as, I don't know how you can look at her and say, oh, she's white. I know she's something else aside from white. I said, huh, come on now, come on now. But most people, she's been able to get away with passing for white, if you will, but she's not. She's actually a freed slave. And she doesn't want the movement to know about it because she's like she's surrounded by all these men, all these people who, if they knew, then it would go and detract. If they knew, it would make things harder. The men who took her in the first place are saying they know who they are, know who she is, they know what she is. So, essentially, now she can't hide. Now they're going to be watching her like a hawk. They have to go and tr get a new location, get a new hiding spot, because now that place is compromised, and now it's under the evil, watchful eyes of those people. We see August. August essentially is being interrogated by Patty. Patty is trying to go and enlist August, and he's trying, and she's trying to bait him. Essentially, say, you know what? Your son was killed. Your son was killed by who? By Black Rose. Yes, by Rosalie. And the thing is, why wouldn't you want to go and help me out? But see, the thing is, Patty is at a crossroads. She needs help, but she can't act like she's at a weaker vantage point. So now. Like I said, Rosalie, she escaped harm because she hid. Elizabeth comes back, and Elizabeth and Rosalie need to have a conversation. Elizabeth tells her, look, I understand what you're trying to do, but because Rosalie is saying, you know, it's about my family. I want to make sure that everyone's good. I want to make sure that I go back for my mother, for my brother. I need to be strong because I am strong. Elizabeth says, that's all well and good, but how can you tell me about the baby? Because I know you wouldn't have gone and um, you will try to stop me. Yeah, of course you would, Rosalie, because she she's trying to let you know that even though you don't feel like you have family, you do. That family is right there in your stomach, and if anything happens to that baby, then what? All None of it will matter. So now Ernestine is talking to Clary, and she's, you know, dolling up her hair, and she's trying to let her, uh, Clary, Clary know that here's the issue. You talk too much. These men want to feel big and powerful and useful. You need to go talk less, find something that the two of you have in common, focus on it, and that's how you've got them. And you have to be a tease. You have to be a tease, you have to look inviting, but you have to be a tease. Remember, Ernestine knows what she's doing, but she's also, every like every couple of minutes, she looks like she wants to upchuck. Remember, because she's going through withdrawal from the opiates that she was doing, that's what it was. Now, uh, from that, we get to August and Patty. We see that the journalist is talking to August, they're trying to talk to August and say, oh, I know you, I know your reputation, interesting, interesting. Um, maybe we can go and write some letters to your son. I'm thinking, dang, he doesn't know his son's dead. Of course he wouldn't, because the guy was just held in prison for all that time for killing a white person. Interesting. Now, you can kill all the black people you want, as long as they don't have a big enough bounty, but kill one white person at that time? Jail. Hmm. Not surprising. Now, like I said, the journalist, and I honestly feel like, I wonder if he's a freedom fighter as well, but he's just masquerading and trying to get intel on them, because something seems really off with him. Something seems really off. He doesn't seem like a bad guy. He seems like he's actually disgusted. You can tell he does not like Patty. He does not like her at all, because she's talking about the um, slaves and the black people she killed. And the fact that she wants to use him to get to uh, Black Rose, they're going to find her. And he's, she's just like, I need the animal. So while he's shaving, she goes, she cuts his neck because she's trying to shake him. So now August is drinking again because he can't really deal with the fact that his son died. Which, that part makes sense. As I already told you, 
we have this weird issue of Georgia. She wants to make sure that the movement keeps moving forward. She's not going to go and bring more attention to her. She's going to go and pretend to masquerade as the um, white woman, or at least someone who can pass for white, and keep it moving because it just paints a bigger target on their back. It makes things a lot more difficult. Rosalie is thinking, dang, she really wants to get Noah. She really wants to find Noah. And here comes Noah. There was someone at the door, and it was Noah. And they go, and they touch in their, each other's faces. And it, it was just a really nice scene, because you could tell that they missed each other. I said, this is love. This is real, genuine love. And I love it. I love it. Problem is that Rosalie has... She's not, she hasn't told Noah yet about the pregnancy. And I'm skipping ahead, but she's not going to. Why? Because she has a plan in mind. We see Kay, though, he invites all of these people, I guess, you know, quiet freedom riders of sorts. And he wants money. He says, here's the thing. He tells this story about how this man shot him. Uh, well, how his ex-master uh, shot him. And he was like, oh, I'm going to shoot the apple off your head. Oh, he missed. Ha, ha, ha. He, he, he. But here's the thing. Here's what they all care about. Money. Money, 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 money. It's not torture. It's not vengeance. It's not pain. It's dinero. That's what they care about. So we need to fight them using that. So he invited all of these rich, black, white, you name it, people here so that he can go and get money from them. And one of the people who's there is Frederick Douglass, who, uh, of course, is well-known a civil rights activist, like the man. And the thing about Frederick Douglass is that his mindset is a little different from Kay, though. You know, he's worked closely with Harry Tubman. So th the thing is, Kay, though, is working with William Still, who's also a, um, a abolitionist. And he was... It's not called a bookkeeper, but kind of that. He was one of the people that would go and help get slaves to freedom right there, freedom papers and all of that. But the thing is that, like I said, we have William. He's collecting everyone's money. We have Frederick Douglass, who is trying to convince Cato's like, I like you. You have potential, but you need to calm down. He's essentially like, you need to calm down. Maybe if you speak to Harriet, you could go and breathe a little bit more. Uh-uh. The thing is, Rosalie, she goes and talks to Noah, and she wants to know, you know, what's happening to Noah, Noah doesn't want to tell her. So she tells him what happens to her, about how she's been working with Harriet, and how at one point she was actually pretending to be Harriet's slave uh, master, so that they could go on this plane, on this train, and they could go and get these other slaves to free them. And she was just talking about all her stories. She's like, you know what, I'm strong, I have a plan, I want to go and free my family. What she wants to do is, her goal is to get Noah to agree to her, again, she doesn't tell Noah yet, agree to him pretending like he is the uh, slave, she is the slave master, again, getting on the train, doing this right before Christmas, going and getting her family, so her mother and her brother, taking them back, and, you know, once Christmas hits, for three days, everything is shut down. So no one will be able to do anything, no one will be able to come after them, and by then they'll be long gone. And he's like, wow, this is not the same Rosalie I remember. Now, it's time for Ernestine to make, uh, have Claire go and appease the slave owner. Now this guy, <laughs> there was a dog that came and was just like scared her for a moment, but anyway. They brought him food, they brought him banana pudding. Because remember, Claire is special. She's special. Originally she thought, oh, because she's dark-skinned, they're not going to like her. It's like, girl, you black. So they love you. It doesn't matter what shade. I wish a lot more people remember that. But the thing is, they need to make sure that he's interested. So, of course, we have Ernestine. She apologizes. She apologizes for acting a plump fool. And he, he doesn't really say anything to her about it. I find it interesting that he didn't say anything, especially to his father, who really owns the place. I guess he probably was embarrassed about it happened on his watch. So him and his friends just stayed quiet and didn't say anything and really didn't do anything. Um, she backs away. And this is where Claire works her magic. She's looking at the horse. Gets, she's starting to pet the horse. 
he's helping her pet the horse because she's like, oh, I'm scared, I'm scared. Horses came from Africa, if I'm not mistaken, just like the banjo. So I'm like, dang, I wish more black people weren't scared of certain things like horses and you're not a redneck if you play the banjo. But I'm, I'm, I'm jumping ahead, skipping ahead. Here's the thing. So that's working. We have Noah who's now talking to Elizabeth. Elizabeth wants him to know that I need you to talk Rosalie out of this. She doesn't say that Rosalie's pregnant either. She doesn't say that, which I thought was very interesting that she didn't bring that up. Uh, Elizabeth needs him to realize Rosalie is safer there. And because she's safer there, that's where she needs to stay. Uh, while Caleb's at his party, I already told you he was talking to Frederick Douglass. He sees Patty in August. So he's, and his friend also tells him that we have another problem. Yeah, your girl, yeah, your girl from overseas, she's here. She's here. She's on her way. She wants to speak with you. Kato, you know, tells everyone to leave. So he's getting the people out of there. He talks to Patty and August and they want to find out where Black Rose is. They don't really care about him. They're just like, oh, where's Black Rose? If we can go and get her, then that's all we need. We see... Clara, she's going and booed up on the, uh, you know, the, what do you call it, the plantation owner, or his son at least, so the plan's working. Ernestine, she's in the bathtub, and she's just over it. We have, we have Hicks, goes and apologizes to her, and she's just like, you know what, I'm done. Done with what? I'm done with you, I'm done with the opiates, I'm done with all of it. See, the thing is, I thought... I believed the negative things you said about me. I believed it because I felt like I didn't deserve better. And so because I didn't deserve better, I didn't uh, go and try to get better. As a result, I ended up with you. So I'm going to go. I'm going to leave you. We are done. This cycle is toxic. You hurt me. I hurt you. You hit me. I hit you back. But you hit harder. So that's what people see. Um, and that's what really matters. Um, but Jesus is like, no. You ain't nothing. You ain't nothing without me. And then he goes again, trying to be controlling man, or controlling person, I should say, because this is the ultimate form of control. Knows that she's addicted to the opiates because she said she doesn't want them anymore. He goes, puts it right in front of her, and says, "Haha, you're not going anywhere." I said, "Oh Lord, I saw that look in her eye. She doesn't look like she's going anywhere." We, uh, the thing is, now it's nighttime, and Elizabeth, she's with Lucas, and again they're talking, they're doing a general chit chat. They stop. She's nervous because she's like, something doesn't feel right. We shouldn't be stopping here. They stop and they get kidnapped. Yeah, they get kidnapped. They get brought to a separate part of the woods. And there's these wranglers who are telling them, here's the thing. They know We know what you're doing. We know you're abolitionist. And we need you to stop. Either you stop or we kill you, torture you, rape you, you name it. She said no. At first, it almost felt like a dream sequence as if it was a test. Because that's what I thought it was. It was a test, but a different type of test. They go, they open up her uh, the back of her dress, and they actually, um, you know, stab her a little bit. And she's just like, you know what? Go for it. I'm so sick and tired of not standing for anything. Go for it. I'm ready. And they said, you know what? We'll give you a second chance. You have two options. Moving forward, you can stop what you're doing, or we will find you again and kill you. And so she said, you know what, all right, it's time to get out of here. So she was trying to get out of those chains. I said, you go, Elizabeth, you go, Elizabeth. Mind you, Kato, which I'm thinking, Kato, what are you doing? He's having this separate meeting with Patty in August. And he's antagonizing, doing his usual antagonizing, saying, oh, so the great slave catcher couldn't catch uh, one woman. Interesting. So you need, you need the former slave's help to do it. Interesting. It was like you. And I know you, August. Of course you'd be mad. Now you make sense since she killed your son. At this point, as we know, there's no real talking. Kato bathed her and said, well, you know what? Just come closely because there's something I want to tell you about. So she, idiot, and comes close. She's like, not going to tell you. So jumps back. His people have their guns out. She and August have their guns out. And, of course, August is pissed. He's just ready to tick, tick, boom. So he's taking everyone out. Patty's taking out the rest. Kato's hiding, and I said, Lord Jesus, don't tell me this is about to happen, and it does. Kato gets found, 
Cato is now captured because they say, we want information from you. So he tells them, look, the best way to get to her is through her mother. I said, oh, Cato, they're not going to release you now. You're basically a slave now. Uh, again, uh, Noah doesn't know that Rosalie is pregnant, so Rosalie's able to convince him with the plan that I told you before to go and get her parents. Rosalie gets there and leaves. Elizabeth essentially is coming back, and it does kind of suck. It really. Our girl Ernestine. Unfortunately, she's back with the righty way. I said, Lord Jesus, Ernestine. She's back in the all white looking at the ocean. I said, You better not go. You better not. You better not. There we go, having Clara, which I felt like was almost her saving grace. Like, she almost had that look of, you know what, I might try this again. But Clara goes running and says, it worked, it worked. Uh, we only kiss right now, but I think we can do more. And Ernestine said, good, because I'm going to use you to get me off of this place. I said, okay, you're still, you know, smelling the opiates, getting high off the opiates, but your mind's still there. You're fighting. You're fighting in your own way, and I got it. Kato now is essentially captured. They took over his house. They're going to go and try and get his mom. So now the chase is on. Who's going to get to Ernestine first? And what's going to happen to Kato now that his house has been taken over by a slave catcher? I said, oh my God, this can't be. See, Kato, that's why you play too much. I told you you play too much. But next week, the episode comes on at 8 p.m. So my review will be up. It will be up on Wednesday night because I'm going to do that right after and then I'll be watching Empire then the Empire review will be up after that so please like comment subscribe oh this show's so good it's so